Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be getting into is how to create a door that opens whenever you approach it. Now I did create a tutorial a while back and I needed to make a refresher tutorial on this. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing is whenever you walk close to a door it's going to open it, right? And then of course whenever you leave the door Say, for instance, we run this way. As you can see, the door closes. And of course, if we just re-walk up against the door again, here we go, it opens up, which is what we want. Of course, if we walk away from it, it's going to close again. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. So we're going to go over to the Scene tab, and I'm going to roll up and head over to the gate. Okay. So what we have here is an empty game object called gate. Uh, you can easily create that by right clicking inside the hierarchy and then selecting create empty. Now on this empty game object, you're going to put a box collider that is set as is trigger. Now, however high you want this trigger to be or however wide you want this trigger to be, this is basically going to activate the script that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So just make sure that you have the box collider that is set as a trigger wherever you want it to be located. So if you want the person to be closer on this side before it opens and then further away on the other side, then you just need to adjust the box collider to wherever you need it to be. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the doors. Now the doors are the actual animation parts. Now these right here, I have set up as two different animations. They're not actually one animation that are flipped. So we have our right door and our left door. So let's go ahead and head over to our doors. And as you can see, I have this animation uh, folder. Now, I just use this for basically organization and all. You can use it for whatever you want to use it. And okay, let's go and select our um, right door. Now this is an imported object, so just make sure that if it's imported, that the imported object is actually the object that you have the animation on, okay? Don't try to animate the this object right here, an empty game object, because for some reason it won't work. So if it's the imported object, you're gonna be animating the actual imported object. So let's go ahead and check out the door. So say for instance, I drag this door inside of here, right? So this is the object I would animate. Even if there's an object underneath it, this is the object I'll be messing with. So let's go and select a right door. And then we're gonna head over to the animation tab. Now right here, as you can see, we have DR closed. So with DR closed, we just need one specific animation, which is close. So the close position. So if you take a look at this right here, we have it set at 6.5. Now to make sure that this does set at 6.5, you're going to select this little record button down here. Once you have that selected, you're gonna see this turn red and this turn red. If this is not red, that means it's not recorded, which means that you need to adjust it. Same thing with the rotation and the scale. So if I decide to change this to 3.5, then it would actually adjust the close to 3.5. So I want to change it back to 6.5 because that's what I want it to be. Now keep in mind, as long as this is set to record, it will continue to record. So no matter where I move this, it's going to be setting that as the set. Okay. Now we're going to go over to DR open. Now DR open is going to be uh, pretty much the opposite. So it's going to be where it's open. Now, if you're wondering what DR means, I'm just setting it as door right. Just like when I go to the left door, it's gonna be door left, okay? So with the door R or DR open, we're going to set it at 17.5. If you see this as blue and it's not set to record, it means that it is recorded already. So if we select this right here, you can see it's red, perfect. And of course, you could set this up however you want it to be as well. Okay, and now we have DR opening. 
So with DR opening, we have it set at 6.5 starting long. So right here we have 6.5, then we drag it over here to 1, and now we have it set to 17.5. Now the cool part about Unity is that you can flip the animation. So we're not going to create a DR closing script, which if you want to, you can. But with the mirror object and all, or mirror animation, it will take it from 1 to 0 instead of the other way around, which is terrific. Okay, so now since we got that done, we, I really don't need to explain the other one because it's the exact same setup, exact same names, except it's DL instead of DR. So let's go ahead and head over to our project view again, head over to our animations. And with DL open and DL closed, you're going to make sure these are on loop time and loop pose. Um, they are basically going to be there as long as they need to be pretty much. Okay, so DR open and DR close, DL open, DL close. Just make sure that they're both set like that. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the animator right here inside the animator tab. And what you're gonna do is you're going to set this DR closed as a default state. So you can right click and then set as layer default state. Um, you're gonna create a parameter called is open. So if you don't know how to do that, press this plus key, go over to bool and set as is open. Now, if you want to add a lock to this, you can if you want to. Um, you just need to press this plus key and put is locked and make sure that it is on a boolean as well. So now since we got that done, we're going to go ahead and make a transition to DR opening. So if you don't have this animation on there, which you should, uh, because once you add the animation inside of this tab right here, it should automatically pop up inside the actual animator or animator controller. Okay, so once you got this, and if you don't got it, just simply click and drag, which is cool. You're going to create a transition. So right click on DR close, make transition, drag to DR opening and select. The next thing we're gonna do, select this arrow, make sure has exit time is off and add a condition called is open is true. And this of course is where you're gonna put you know, if you have a lock on there, then is locked is equal to false, okay? Now, we're going to have it head into DR open. So we want this to finish out, and then we're going to have it equal to DR open, right? So we're gonna make a transition, go to DR open, and there will be no conditions for this. Now from DR open, we're going to have it go back to DR closing, it has no exit time, and is open is equal to false. Now, this does not need a locked value um, because it is going to be how it is. Now, you could sit there and say if is locked is equal to true, but it's not necessary. Okay. And with this animation right here, I simply just copy this right here by pressing Control D, this renaming it, and then selecting Mirror. So it's very basic. And then from there, you're going to make a transition back to DR closed and just make sure it has exit time as well. And that's all there is to it. Now we're gonna talk about the script. Now the script is not that complex at all. It's a very simple script actually. And here it is. I called it public class gate script. Um, but you can call it whatever you want to call it. And what we have here is a public game object called left door and right door. If you notice this comma space, uh, that just means that we're going to save room instead of typing in another public game object, like so. Uh, we basically just saved room by putting in a comma and then just typing in the next word. So yeah, okay. Now we have private void on trigger enter collider other. Now this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna say left door dog get component animator dot set bool is open true. 
So what this long confusing statement is meaning is we're going to grab the left door, we're going to find a component called animator on the left door, and then we're going to set the bool inside the animator to is open, or we're going to find is open, and make sure that it is equal to true. Yeah, it's a, it's a long process, but basically that's all it's doing. It's just checking to see if is open is true. Or actually setting it to be true. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be doing the same thing with the right. We're going to set it equal to true. Now, here's where you're going to put, you know, if it's locked or not. So if it is locked, you're going to need to add a public um, bool called is locked here as well. And of course, you're going to put if not is locked. And of course, put that right there and drag those inside there. Of course, you would have to put in a function for how to unlock it as well. Um, but we're not going to be covering that today because that is not what this tutorial is about. OK, now we have private void on trigger exit. Now, this is basically going to say when we leave the trigger. So we're going to use the same function that we used up here. But instead of putting it to equal to true, we're going to make it equal false. And just like that, we're going to press play. And let's go ahead and rerun all the way back out there uh, before, you know, we get lost. Here we go. And just like that, it opens for us. And just like that, it closes. Now, if you notice that slamming close like that, it's not really a big deal at all. All you need to do is just add in a closing animation instead of putting DR closing or putting a mirror effect inside there. Okay. So that's all it is. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you guys next time.